Hello everyone. In this episode, I'd like to show you how you can create your own billboards in Dash Studio. Those are planes that are facing more or less the camera and they will render as if you had a full 3D object in your scene at a much lower rendering cost. So if you need to render a crowd or something, then billboards are the way to go. There's a product actually that is called Now Crowd Billboards on the Dash Store by Riversoft Art. And those are all billboards. Those are all literally flat planes. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can create your own from the characters that you already own. Let's take a look at a scene that I'm currently working on. It's not quite finished. It's, you know, it's got grain and I, I'm not happy with the lighting and there's a lot of work to be done. But you can see that all these apes in the street, they are all billboards. So only one of them is actually real geometry. And the cool thing about that is it's just that the render time is just so much faster. If you need to render this with full Genesis characters, that wouldn't fit into any of my graphics cards. So it's kind of cool to be able to, um, to do that. Let me show you what the actual scene looks like inside Dash Studio here with the filament preview. If I go and rotate this now, you'll see that, well, except for aside from the from the 1920s street here, all these guys here are in fact billboards and they're just flat. And I'm going to show you in this episode how to make them with a graphics application like Photoshop. It'll work with other bits and pieces as well. If you have something like PaintShop Pro or Clip Studio Paint, it'll work with that as well. But I'm going to show you specifically how to do this with Photoshop. Just the principles are very similar with all the other applications. And there's going to be another video in which I'm going to show you how to do this without Photoshop. So there's a plugin called Billboard Builder. I'm going to discuss this in another video. Let's get started. I'm going to start with the completely arbitrary character, and that's in my case, the Bulwark. He's going to be my assistant for the scene. How are you doing, Bulwark? And he's going to be rendered on a square with transparent background. I might just go and render him from the front. So I'll frame up my shot like this, and I'm going to go and create a camera from this in a moment. I'm going to go and make sure that under my render settings, under general, I'm going to go and pick a square aspect ratio. And that's just so that the aspect ratio on a billboard is going to be identical to the one that we're rendering so that we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to go and render this in 1200 by 1200. You can go lower, you can go higher. It kind of depends on what your scene requires. 1200 is probably going to be good enough for what I'm doing. Camera, fairly important. Let's go and create one from the perspective view, just so that I can save this shot and if I need to make any adjustments, I have this locked in and saved just in case I wanted to you know, render him from a different perspective or whatnot, then I have this shot um, lined up. But this is going to be OK. Let me go and switch on my IRA preview and let's talk about lighting a little bit. So the lighting shouldn't be arbitrary or it shouldn't be flat or it shouldn't be anything special. It should just integrate into the master scene that you're building. So if you remember the street scene that I've showed you, I had a particular lighting in mind and I'm going to try and mimic that with the billboards. So if you're if you're in your master scene, the shadows go to the left and your billboards shadows all go to the right, that's probably not a good match. So try and match them up so that they match as close as possible. Shadows is an interesting topic to talk about. Like this is the default HDRI that comes with Dash Studio, the ruins one. And on that, the shadows are fairly soft, but they, they are very long as well. So they go off my render. And you need to find a way to cut these off, either soften them off with the brush. I'll show you how to do that in Photoshop or change your lighting accordingly so that these long shadows don't get cut off because it'll look weird when you have something that looks like this, but the shadow all of a sudden stops like a hard line. You want to probably avoid that. So in my case, I'm just going to go and head over to the environments tab to dome and I'm going to twist the dome's X rotation by 90. And then the shadows that they, they don't go off the screen anymore, they're still being cut off left and right. So we're going to soften this up still, but they're going to be much softer. So I'm going to go and render it like this. But feel free to put on a different HDRI altogether and render your image that way so that you know, you're happy with it and that the lighting integrates with the master scene that you have in mind. I've rendered him at a thousand iterations in 1200 by 1200. Didn't take all that long. The most important thing now is that we're going to save him as a PNG. So make sure you don't make it a JPEG because that won't have the transparency information in there. We want to have PNG so that we have the character isolated from the background so that all these little squares here, that represents transparency. 
I'm going to go and save this on my desktop so that I find it again. Perhaps I'll even make a new folder here, treat myself to something that's called billboards. And in it, I'm going to save the bulwark. I'll call it bulwark one. And that's everything I needed to do in this scene. And now comes the Photoshop part in which we need to create a transparency mask from this character. And in Photoshop, it's really easy to do that. Load up your image. Here he is. And add a background to it. So what we want to achieve is something that gives us a black background and black means this is transparent and anything that is the picture content like a bulwark that needs to be completely white. So gray values in the transparency map are going to be half transparent. So we, we only really ideally want to deal with black and white for the background and the character and for something gray for the shadows. So in Photoshop, you do this by going to this little yin yang icon down here and create a solid color as a layer. And this is going to be a black color. I'll go and drag that underneath my layer stack and then we have this. So that's the background we want, but the guy is still the regular color. So we want to go and right click on this guy on our layer with the person and add blending options to it. And the blending options will allow us to add a color overlay to our character. And if we enable that, we can pick a color here. Let's go and pick white, pure white. Hit OK. And that is exactly what we need for our layer stack. So now we can see that all the shadows are kind of glowing out white in all directions. He is com or kind of gray in all directions. Background is black and he's completely white. And this is exactly what we need. And the cool thing is this is completely non-destructive. If we want to bring his colors back or if we want to do some color adjustments, we can do that. So the only thing that will be noticeable is the shadow cut off here. And that's an easy fix too. For that, we go and create a layer mask so that we completely non-destructive here. And with the mask selected, I can take a brush and paint on it with black. We're going to do that with a fairly large size and it needs to be soft. And that will go and let us eliminate the shadows here. You can take off as much or as little as you like, and you can work with a pen and make it as good or as bad as you like to do it. I'm just going to go and indicate this as a, as a little demo here. The, the brush could probably be a little bit bigger so that this is um, softer. As I said, you can spend as much or as little time on this as you like. Just make sure these edges are not noticeable. If there's a hard line, that'll be, that'll be noticeable. And this is now our transparency mask. So we can use our original render that we had with this transparency mask to set up our billboard. Let's go and save this out. It doesn't matter how we do it. If we can use a JPEG for this. So I'm going to call this one Bulwark 1 Mask. And the other one is a PNG, but that's okay. We can, we can totally use both of these together. Now let's go back into Dash Studio and delete our previous bulwark. We don't need him anymore. We can keep the camera intact. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go and create myself a primitive, and that's going to be our actual billboard. So head over to Create, New Primitive, and this is going to be, a, it should roughly match the size of your character. So in my case, I'm thinking the bulwark's probably two meters. One division is fine. It can be as low res as it needs to be, but two meters is kind of a good size. So it's going to be a two meter by two meter plane. We want to probably make sure it's set to Z positive. That means it's not going to be flat on the ground. It means it'll be facing us forward. And if you hit accept, then this is what we get. A plane with the blue thing kind of pointing forward. So it is aligned to the front. On this plane, we're now going to go and set up the surfaces with basically our render as the base color. And the transparency map is going to be plugged into the geometry channel under cutout geometry. So let's go up here to base. Uh, this is the base channel here. It's white. Let's go and load in my original. I've made some more. These are my, my apes here that I've made, but ours are on the desktop under billboards. This is the bulwark character. 
and here he is. The color, this is essentially the color of the texture that's not showing the map. So in our case, white is perfect. But if you wanted to give this guy a little tint, you could do that. You can make him kind of, you know, blue or you can have a red one or whatnot. If you had a gray character, then you can give it color with that. Just a little aside here. But you can see that he's not quite transparent. So he's got this black background. And that is why we've rendered this transparency map in Photoshop. You head over to the geometry channel and then here under cutout opacity, you can go and plug that right in. So browse to it, namely this mask here. And the moment we hit open, you can see that the background turns invisible. And that is kind of cool. We're almost there. So there's a couple of things that I'd like to do. The first thing is that the manipulator is not at the bottom where his feet are. So that's kind of where I'd like to have my manipulator. So I'll go and choose the front view and line him up and imagine where I'd like the manipulator to be, like maybe exactly in the middle of the feet. And to change that, we can head over to this little tool here, which is called the joint editor. If you don't have that icon, you can also head over to tools and then pick the joint editor from here. Alt shift J is the default hotkey for that. But yeah, joint editor, that will now change our manipulator a little bit. So we will see a tiny red manipulator and a green one you can ignore the red one so uh, if you if they're both at the same space here just grab one and move the red one up a little bit and move the green one with left click and drag down to where you'd like the center point to be the pivot point i'm going to put it here you can move it left or right doesn't matter but wherever your billboard needs to have that center point and once you've done that, you can go back to the regular universal manipulator tool. That's this icon here. Or you head over to tools, universal, alt shift U. That'll do that. And now we can go to, well, actually now we can move him to the ground plane. So left click and drag the new manipulator and put him right where the ground plane is, kind of roughly to about here. So the cool thing about this is now, if you go into the perspective view, you can now move this around in your scene where it needs to be fairly easily. So as when it comes to placing your character in the scene, you have full control, like as if it were a regular Genesis character. I'm gonna make sure I'll do control Z and, and bring him into the center of the scene for now, because we do need to save him out so that we can add him into a scene later. So there's only one other thing that I'd like to do. If you look at him from certain angles and depending on the light, you can see that there's a bit of reflection going here. So it might be that once you put him into position, you don't want him to be as reflective. And that's just a property of the default eye ray shader. That's a little bit reflective. And we can turn that down to make it integrate better with our lighting because if you imagine there's a light that hits my billboards and they all reflect it it might just you know look uncanny so uh, head over back onto the surfaces tab and into the base channel and there's the glossy channel and under glossy we have one channel that's called glossy roughness and that's set to zero so it means it's completely shiny but if you crank that up to one then you'll see what happens to the billboard it, it loses its reflectivity you can go to exactly one that means there's no reflectivity at all but you can give it a little reflectivity maybe with 0.8 that's probably a good medium ground there but experiment and see what your project requires so the only other thing that we need to do is we need to save him and i suppose we're gonna have to name him something we don't want to leave him plain we can call him bulwark or whatever your character is called and the easiest thing to save this guy is in fact to turn him into a scene set. So I have a library set up here already into which I'm saving my characters and I can go and hit the plus icon and save this as a scene subset. So the cool thing about this is that you don't have to worry about a product name or whatever your geometry ends up being saved. If you save a scene subset, then the plane will be saved inside the scene and I can just call it. I've got one already. I'm going to overwrite him bulwark and that's that. Scene subset is a concept in which not the whole scene is saved, but only part of it. So I have other things in my scene, like a filament draw options node and a camera and environment options. I don't really need that. All I need is the bulwark here. So I can either untick everything and just leave the bulwark or use this little 
menu up here and say check only the scene selected item and since i only have my bulwark selected i can do this and everything gets unselected except for the bulwark and hit accept and that'll save him to my scene so now the cool thing is that i can delete him and then go and either double click this to load him into the center of the scene where i've left him or i can go and alt click and drag him into my scene and then put multiple copies of him around anywhere they need to be i can even if i wanted that i can even go and turn him into a whole army of whoops <laughs> into a whole army of bulwarks by turning him into instances so for example select the bulwark and hit create node instances and the default is 10 we can make it as many as we like maybe we'll make it 20 hit copy and go boom oh my god a whole army of these guys and they're all part of a group now so you can go and adjust where they stand if they need to be closer to the ground plane or whatnot you can go and pick them up individually and distribute them as you see fit send them to the back send them give them a little rotational angle so that they're not all the same and of course since they're so easy to make you can just literally go and create multiple variations and multiple poses and then just go and create your whole army of bulwarks if you so desire that's really how you do it you make a render you turn it into a transparency mask and then you plug that into the base channel well you plug the render into the base channel you plug the transparency mask into your cutout opacity you turn down the reflectivity and bob's your uncle betty is your aunt i hope this was helpful saving you a lot of render times i'm going to make another video that explains how to do this with billboard builder plugin that is a nice script by totte aka code 66 watch out for that thank you so much for watching i will see you next time take care Bye-bye.